Constantia Belisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey, one, good vibrations. Although you'll never hear me using phonetics on the air because I'm entirely a CW and PSK operator. In fact, my mobile radio, my uh, FT-857D mobile radio from Yesu, I didn't even bother to plug the microphone into that thing when I put it together. But the, the topic of this video is to answer some questions that a viewer had a, in particular about an antenna, a fairly popular antenna, known as a ground plane antenna or simply a ground plane. What, what that is basically is a quarter wavelength vertical antenna. Here's your quarter wavelength vertical antenna element. And that can, it doesn't have to be a quarter of a wavelength. Uh, if you have a little tuning network down here, you can make it a half a wavelength or three eighths or up to five eighths sometimes even more than that, although usually not more than five-eighths of a wavelength. But a good length, a resonant length, a self-resonant length is a quarter of a wavelength for that vertical radiator. And then most ground plane antennas have three or four radial wires going out horizontally or sometimes down at a slant. And those are each a quarter of a wavelength long. And these four radial wires here, or radial uh, spokes, serve to mimic the actual ground when the base of this antenna is more than a quarter of a wavelength above the actual surface of the Earth. Now, you can put an antenna like this directly on the ground. And then you can all you can run the radials out. Some t some uh, radio hams bury their radials under the ground, and you can have a lot more than four, and you can make them longer than a quarter of a wavelength if you bury them under the ground and you have a surface or earth ground mounted vertical. That is a common practice on uh, well, it's fairly common on forty meters. It's quite common on 80 and 75 meters. And it's a kind of a 160 meter operator's dream because a quarter wavelength antenna that on that band would be about 128 feet high, I believe, or 130 feet high, uh, which is not within the reach of most radio amateurs. But... He mentions if you put a one-fourth wave whip up for VHF or UHF. So let's just suppose that you have an antenna like this for, um, oh, say that it's in, uh, designed for the uh, two-meter amateur radio band. If you're going to do that, you feed your, uh, your system with coaxial cable, the center conductor of the cable goes to the vertical radiating element and then and that which is a quarter wavelength long on uh, the two meter amateur radio band or 144 megahertz said to be about 19 inches a little over a foot and a half or just about exactly a half a meter which is <laughs> one quarter of two meters okay so and then you have these radial wires now they don't have it doesn't necessarily have to be four of them you could have three of them you could have only two of them as a matter of fact you could get away with only one he says I, what i don't understand is giving the ground plane four times the wire that the radiator gets well that's not necessary really um, you can get away with just one radial wire uh, it's just that if you want an antenna 
to be symmetrical uh, so that it will develop a an effective counterpoise to the ground. You want a number of wires parallel to the ground. As a matter of fact, your ideal antenna for this purpose would actually be a disc or a screen with a radius of a quarter of a wavelength like that. or a diameter of a half a wavelength, and then a quarter of a wavelength vertical radiator. That would be the ideal arrangement, but you could bend this disc down into a cone. You could bend it down sharper and sharper and sharper. And the only effect that that's really going to have is on the feed point impedance. A ground plane antenna has about a 37 ohm impedance at the feed point, which is a pretty good match to coaxial cable, but it's not perfect. If you make your radial wires slant down at about a 45, I'm trying to draw four of them slanting down at about a 45 degree angle or thereabouts, so that this angle here between any one radial and the vertical would be 135 degrees. Then you're going to get a feed point impedance very close to 50 ohms, which is a perfect match to most ham radio coaxial cables. But he says, why use four wires for the radials and only one for the radiator? Wouldn't, wouldn't you get a better result if you had more wires for the radiator? Wouldn't that produce a stronger signal? Suppose that you did that. Suppose that you put up a dozen wires, all a quarter of a wavelength long, for your radiator. Well, what would happen if you put up, say, 12 wires like that? You might arrange them in the form of a cone, sort of a, a cone-shaped array of wires, each one a quarter of a wavelength long. Would you get more signal? And the answer is no, you wouldn't. Because what's going to happen is that the, the amount of signal strength that you get is determined by the current in the antenna, in the radiating element or elements. And that current, in turn, is determined by the radiation resistance of the antenna, which, if you have four radials going down at a 45-degree slant, will be just about exactly 50 ohms radiation resistance. So if you increase the number of antenna radiators, the current is going to stay the same. The, the current in the sum total of them is going to stay the same. Each radiator will just get a fraction of the current. So if you had, say, 12, radio, uh, 12 uh, vertical radiators or radiators in the form of a cone like that, you're not going to get 12 times the signal. You're going to get the same signal. It's just that each one of those wires uh, or vertical or elements uh, that radiate is going to get one twelfth of the current. The current's going to divide up among them. It's not going to increase the current by increasing the number of radiators. But what will happen if you increase the number of radiators and arrange them in a fan them out or arrange them in a cone like that is you will end up with an antenna that has greater bandwidth. So instead of having say a, a usable standing wave ratio only between 144 and 148 megahertz you might get one that works all the way from Oh, you know, something down around 110 megahertz up to 170 megahertz, something like that. A much broader bandwidth results when you do that with your radiating element. He says, I have a notion that by adding more radials, you are creating a false plane mimicking the Earth's surface. That is exactly correct. That's exactly what happens.
I don't know if I'd call it faults, imitation maybe, an imitation of the Earth's surface. But is, if that is the case, yes, why not just mount the thing right on the ground? Why do you have to put it up so high? Well, you do want to put it up high to get it clear of obstructions. Uh, and it will then have a better shot at the horizon. But he said what he thinks would be an ideal arrangement would be to just have your antenna, your quarter wave antenna, in a big field, a big flat field. And then you just connect a ground rod here, say at the, at the feed point, and uh, once you've done that, you connect the shield of your coax to the ground rod and the center conductor to this. And the earth itself will serve as your, as your ground plane. It would, wouldn't that be the best possible ground plane? And the answer is yes, it would if only the earth were a perfect conductor. But it ain't. It's far from it. That's why radio hams will lay down radial wires in the earth to improve the conductivity of the earth. Now, if you are at a frequency of, say, 1.8 megahertz, and you happen to be fortunate enough to have a huge open field like you might find in a lot of South Dakota, where I live here, if you happen to be that fortunate, and, and you can lay down a bunch of radials under the ground, bury them, and you can get out, and you happen to be fortunate enough to have the, live far enough from an airport that the Federal Aviation Administration will let you put up a 130 foot tall antenna like this. If you're that lucky, that would make a doggone good antenna. Why do people use 16 or more radials around a flagpole antenna? Well, that's an awful tall flagpole there, but why would you want to lay these radials down? And as I said, the reason is to improve the ground conductivity. And by so doing, you minimize the loss resistance in your antenna system. If you don't have those radials, the ground inevitably, because it's not a perfect conductor, is going to dissipate some of your power as heat because it's just, it's like having a resistance wire in your, if you put a resistance wire in a, in a utility lamp, the lamp isn't going to light up near as bright and that wire is going to get hot. Same thing, exactly the same thing in the ground around an antenna if that ground is not a very good conductor and but by laying a whole bunch of radials down you make the ground a much better conductor he finally concludes by asking a horizontal dipole makes sense to me but if you turn it vertically why does it need so many more radials here's your dipole if you turn that thing on its side and feed it, you know, like this. If you do it like that, why would it need so many radials, he would ask. And the answer is, it doesn't. It doesn't. A vertical dipole is a perfectly good antenna. And in fact, at VHF, you will find vertical dipoles like this mounted on masts And they work perfectly well, quarter of a wavelength on each leg of the dipole. They work perfectly well. So you don't need those radials, really. If you run one radial straight down, actually, that's all you really need. But then you're going to get a 73 ohm impedance at the feed point, which may or may not pose a problem for you. Uh, I would say that under most circumstances it's perfectly good you'll get an SWR of 1.4 to 1 or thereabouts maybe 1.5 but that's as good as a perfect match for all intents and porpoises. Stan Gibalisco W1GV signing off saying 73 
Hope that helps you out there with your ground plane questions. Keep the questions coming. That's my job is to answer questions that people have to help them learn about these things. That's the best way I know. So long.